Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Top 10 Knits, covering my favourite top 10 knitting patterns from those released between winter to spring 2021 to 2022. So it's been a wee while since my last episode and I've been very busy. I have a couple of finished objects to show you and the first is the Manzil Knits which are finally finished. Let's see if I can show you a decent detail on my phone camera. Absolutely love these. I featured them in my second episode and I also finished this drop shoulder jumper I don't know if you can see that very well with all my favourite colours all wrapped up into one jumper and that was knit using the JC Rennie yarn which is the shade card in this frame here and I've been jeweling all over the new patterns that I have found for you for this episode so a huge thanks as ever to the designers for letting me use their photos, without which I would not have a channel. And I have created subtitles and transcripts below and timestamps. So if you click on the show more bo button below, sorry, um, it allows you to jump between the designs so you can find your favourite ones. I hope you're as inspired watching this as I have been making it. In alphabetical order this time, here are this episode's top 10 knits. The Fallen Embers hat is by Ruth Wen of Red Earth Design Studio. What amazing texture in this cabled hat, and the yarn used makes the pattern just sing with warmth and cosiness. Ruth has used Yarn Baker Merino Nylon DK in colour Pimpernel for the sample. It's a DK Superwash Merino Nylon blend, and you can see the smooth gloss of the superwash making the cables really pop. There are plenty of Superwash Merino Nylon DK blends available in the UK to substitute if you'd prefer, although the yarn seller does ship internationally. Ruth says of her design, Fallen embers sprang out of a sudden moment of inspiration while I was contemplating what to do with a single special skein of yarn. During my teen years, Fallen Embers by Enya was one of my favourite songs and my mind's eye connected it with the deep red shade of my special yarn. I envisioned a shower of falling sparks and an intricate star motif formed by interlacing cables and twisted stitches. I hope this design will inspire you to break out your own special skein and create something to wear and love. This tech edited and tested pattern is knit in the round from the bottom up and includes tutorials for the bobble techniques. It costs £5.86 on Lovecrafts and $7 currently £5.38 on Payhip. This looks like a great cabling challenge on a manageable scale, and Ruth has written a brilliant blog post de detailing her inspiration for this pattern on her website. I'll include the link in the show notes below, so get fallen embers on your headphones and this hat on your needles. The Forsythia cardigan by Jamie Hoffman of Knitosophy is a cosy cabley cardigan with optional pockets and big scrunchy cuffs. Clearly I'm in a cable mood this episode. This casual cardigan is just my style and the combination of cable texture with garter cuffs and neck button band is eye-catching. Jamie says, I knew I wanted strong di stitch definition on a comfy cardigan. Soon after, I found the perfect yarn to match the pattern. Elder, a light worsted base from Ritual Dyes, has a gorgeous two-ply twist that contributes even more definition than I'd expected. As one person put it, it's like a stitch within a stitch. Elder is a US yarn and is available in the UK solely from Fig Tree Yarns if you'd like to use the sample yarn. Otherwise you'd be looking for 100% wool in a DK light worsted weight. This is a non-superwash worsted spun yarn. Worsted spun means this will be a smoother and more dense yarn. The cardigan uses between 7 to 900 gram skeins depending on the size knitted. Forsythia comes in 19 sizes from 28 to 64 inch or 70 to 160 centimetre chest circumference. Jamie also includes the hip circumference size, which is excellent for me as my hips are much bigger than my top half. Not only that, but there is a great schematic with extensive sizing information for this pattern included in the pattern images, so you can make the perfect fit for your body size. I really love this attention to detail. The cardigan is a raglan knit flat and top down, 
The cables can be knit without a cable needle and there is a tutorial in the pattern for how to do this if this technique is new to you. So much work has gone into this pattern and it's also available in the Spanish language. It costs $10 which is converting to £7.68 at the moment. This is a stunning cosy cardigan and I really appreciate the designer's efforts to help us make sure that we'll get a garment that fits beautifully, given that it would be quite the time investment if you're a slow knitter like me. There's even a swatch chart for the cable pattern. I'm a big advocate for doing a swatch before knitting. There are plenty of great photos of the cardigan across a range of sizes, so you can get an idea of how you would look snuggled up in Forsyth here. The Gondor Vest by Helen Arneson of Fable Knitwear checks my librarian boxes straight away. I have a few linen shirts and have been trying to find the perfect vest top to layer over them to create this style. Of course the messy reality of working in a library is that this would be far too special an outfit for that environment. This looks like a relatively easy knit in a toasty yarn that would keep you nice and warm in spring. Helen designed this 1940s inspired cropped and fitted rib vest to be Perfect for wearing over blouses, dresses or turtlenecks. Knit from bottom to top, Gondor vest is knit in the round and separated for the sleeves. It's knit with negative ease to stretch to fit. Helen uses her own hand dyed yarn for Gondor vest. Athena, a four ply merino nylon blend and mohair silk, a lace weight kid mohair silk blend. They're knit with two strands held together. You can order the yarn internationally Helen is based in Oslo, or you can substitute with your favourite local yarn dyer, as the yarn bases in these blends are fairly easily available. The pattern, which is available in English and Norwegian, costs £6.80. It comes in seven sizes to fit chest measurements between 31 to 52 inches, or 80 to 132 centimetres. The ribbed pattern and negative ease sizing makes this much more likely to fit neatly, with a smart double thickness collar and sleeve cuff detail. There are loads of lovely examples under the Gondor Vest hashtag on Instagram. The Hannah Jima shawl is by Noriko of Nori Chan Knits. This scrumptious garter stitch shawl looks so cosy and comforting, with a lovely bit of Celtic style lace for added interest. Noriko designed this shawl as part of a cosy themed collaboration with the US Pacific Northwest yarn dyer Sugar Plum Circus for their new base, Lux Arin. She says, after you get into the rhythm of the pattern, Hannah Jima is great TV knitting, perfect to knit a cosy shawl in your favorite cosy spot. The triangular shawl comes in two sizes, but can be customized to easily to your preferred size. The length of the longest edge is 75 or 92.5 inches or 191 or 235 in centimetres. It starts from the thinnest end of the triangle and increases to the lace panels. The sample here uses Sugar Plum Circus Lux Aran, which is an 80-20 merino alpaca blend. As she is based in the US and I couldn't find any UK stockists, you may need to substitute for this. The pattern is tech edited and the cost comes under a pay what work models of between $7.50 to $15, which is between £5.80 to £11.60. It has also been written in a low vision version with sans serif font in 24 point. The lace panel is both charted and written out in full. You can never have too many shawls and I love a good TV knit. It's been a while since I knit at Aram weight and it looks like this would just fly off the needles in time for the cooler seasons. Introspection by Woolly Wormhead is a set of six hat styles available as an ebook or as individual patterns. The exciting thing about these patterns is the complete customizable option of them. Whatever yarn you want to use, whatever gauge you're getting, and whatever head size you're knitting for, these patterns are customizable to that. Woolley says, introspection was developed with slow, meditative knitting in mind. Each hat in the collection has been written to cover six yarn weights across 12 sizes. They each feature four brim options and between four and ten crown options, depending on the style. Variegated and handspun yarns will love these designs as much as semi-solids and solids or millspun. Woolley includes chapters on using different stitch patterns in the hats. 
perfect for practicing the many stitches marked in my tab filled stitch dictionaries as I lack a bit of confidence in this area. There are also detailed photographic tutorials and information on the maths and structure of each hat style, which Woolly says will suit hat knitters and designers alike. The ebook of all six hat patterns costs $23 or £18, or you can buy each pattern individually for $9 each or £7.16. I get really excited by the possibilities that customisable patterns give. I'm always thinking of ways to personalise a pattern and I have far too many single skeins of yarn waiting for me to do something with them. Introspection looks like the perfect solution and is such good value considering just how many hat options you can get from them. The Joni Tea is by Julia Wilkins. I just love this casual relaxed style and that fab deep v-neck with the subtle decorative edging. This looks like a great beginner project as the relaxed fit means it's probably going to be okay if it doesn't come out at quite the expected size. The stripe effect that draws some of the cream stripe into the blue stitches makes such a beautiful contemporary and at the same time classic look. Julia says that the minimalist design is shaped by four key features. An extra wide body combined with close fitting armholes and a deep v-neck with a decorative pico edge. It is designed to be worn with generous positive ease. Joni is knit with a very interesting construction. It looks like you start knitting flat at the back upwards from the armpits maybe and then knit up to the neck where the work is split for the neck opening. Knitting over the top and down to the armpits everything is then joined together to knit in the round down to your desired length. The bottom and neck band are fold double folded with a pico edge and Julia has included a YouTube tutorial, link in the description below, on picking up stitches around a garter edge. Julia's sample is knit using Mayak Tibetan Cloud in Daisy and Genziana. This is a sport light DK weight 100% Tibetan sheep wool. This is an eco-friendly wool sheared by hand by Tibetan nomadic communities and dyed and spun in Italy. I've added a link to a Loop London YouTube episode in the description if you'd like to find out more about the Emiak Tibetan fibres. The arm blend echoes Kashmir Baby Yak and it's available in the UK through sellers like Loop and a yarn story at £26 a skein. You'd need between 4 to 7 skeins depending on the size knitted. Joni T comes in 8 sizes from 42 to 70 inches or 108 to 179 centimetres. This includes an ease of 13 inches or 33 centimetres and there are comprehensive schematic figures to get your best fit. The pattern costs €5.95 which is £5. I'm very excited by this pattern. Knitting down allows you to try on as you go and make sure everything is fitting how you want it. I'm easily disheartened when big garments don't go the way I thought they would as I'm quite a slow knitter so I'm drawn to patterns like this that are written in such a way as to maximise the chances of a great fit. Starlit Night Fingerless Mittens are by Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery. The pattern and yarn are a perfect match for each and I could instantly visualise the Starlit Night when I saw these. I've not come across this interesting stitch pattern before and fingerless mitts are a totally manageable size for practising new and exciting techniques. Anushka says of her mittens, the best time to make and wear beautiful hand knits is during the darkest days and the longest nights of midwinter. Gaze upwards on a cold, clear evening and you might be rewarded with the luminescence of the winter sky. The Starlit Night Mittens are part of the Midwinter Knits collection, a collaborative project with Aroha Knits. Four designs are inspired by the practice of stargazing at Matariki, the Maori New Year, which falls on the Southern Hemisphere's winter solstice. Anushka and Francois of Aroha Knits chat about their collaboration, knitwear design and heritage in a YouTube episode that I've included below if you'd like to find out more. The mittens are constructed in the round with a slip stitch colourwork pattern, an afterthought thumb and three different yarns. The yarns used for these mittens are the Urban Pearl Wonderful Worsted, a DK Light Worsted Weight Super Wash Merino, and two different shades of Aito Sensei, a lace weight mohair silk blend. One of the Sensei strands is tonally similar to the Merino, 
to create a subtle mild effect, while the other Sensei strand contrasts and provides the slip stitch star texture. The Urban Pearl is an indie yarn company based in London and she has an Etsy shop. Aito Sensei is a Japanese yarn company with plenty of UK suppliers. There are also numerous indie dyers using a similar mohair silk blend based on lace weight. This tech edited and test knitted pattern comes in three sizes and costs £5. There's also a matching shawl to go with these mittens and I think they'd make a lovely set. The combination of merino and a mohair silk lace weight makes such a deep rich colour to knitted fabric and there are so many possibilities. I love the idea of picking two strands of tonally similar shades, one merino and one lace weight merino silk, and creating your own custom shade, like painting with yarn. I have many pairs of fingerless mittens and find them so useful because I'm always messing about with my phone when out and about. Starlit night mittens are the perfect accessories to make a winter outfit sing. The Trilo Tea by Sashiko Bergen has a real spring vibe with its open drapey fabric and delicate waist and arm cuff lace pattern. I really like the deep ribbing around the neck, it gives Trilo a contemporary design feel. Sashiko says of her design, it's a fluffy raglan tee with an intricate lace stitch that is much easier to knit than it looks. Also a pretty quick knit too based on how incredibly fast my test knitters whipped up theirs. I would recommend checking the hashtag TrilloT to see other beautiful versions. Trilo is worked bottom up in the round, seamlessly except for the small underarm seams. Sashiko advises a fluffy lace weight yarn for the best effect, however any lace weight yarn could be used. She's knit this one in a unique mohair mulberry silk merino wool yak blend, using the ethical Pasquale Manada yarn. Manada is Spanish for a herd of animals. There are UK distributors if you'd like to use the same yarn. Trilo comes in nine sizes from 35 and a quarter to 70 and a half inches or 89.5 to 179 centimeters with two to four or five to 10 centimeters of positive ease for a relaxed yet smart fit. The pattern costs $7 or £5.67. A gorgeous pattern that would be perfect for the warming spring days ahead and with Pisquali Manada coming in a huge range of colours from gentle pastels to hot zingy shades, you're sure to find the perfect colour to make this tea sing. The Venetian mitts are by Xenia Nijon of Life is Cozy. I love a pair of fingerless mitts. They're the perfect size of project when you want the satisfaction of a finished object and so handy to have for layering in rainy Glasgow. I was drawn to the rib style pattern which helped to make a nice snug fit and the extra warmth fold over top. Xenia says, subtle textures of this cosy pair were inspired by the intricate marble and granite stonework of Venice. The way light and shadow are used as part of rich decorations of Venetian architecture is applied to the mitten's design adding depth and dimension to the intertwined stitches and knobs. There are instructions, charts and a video tutorial to help you with the two decorative stitches in this pattern. The ribbed sections create an ergonomic palm and thumb shaping. This mitten uses one skein of sock yarn, which is perfect for those single skeins we all have, I'm sure. The sample here uses Seismic Lux 4 ply, which is an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon blend. There are plenty of local indie dyers using a similar blend for easy substitution. The mitten comes in three sizes and costs $6.50 or £5.27 on Payhip and £5.77 on Lovecrafts. The Venetian mittens are part of a collection called Stone by the Sun and Fog which includes a range of patterns using stone, rocks, cliffs, gemstones and smooth pebbles as its inspiration. I'll also include a link to this below as there are some great patterns in the collection from designers of Northern California. The beautiful Petu Cowl is by Francois of Aroha Knits. Petu is coincidentally also part of the same Midwinter Knits collection as the starlit night mittens I featured earlier in the episode. I found these patterns totally separately, so clearly the collection speaks to me. 
At first I thought this was a triangular shawl, so it was a nice surprise to find that it's a cowl with a triangular drapey front and the added convenience that it won't fall off and there aren't two ends draping about at the edges. I really like the shape of this cowl. I often feel like a cowl should cover the neck and when I make them and they're too drapey I tend not to wear them. But this is perfect because the intention is that it drapes down and it looks so good for it. I wear shawls like this all the time. Francois says of her design, When I think of the word winter, the Maori New Year Matariki immediately comes to mind. Winter in the southern hemisphere runs during the northern summer months. June to August, Matariki refers to the cluster of stars that become visible during this time, heralding the new year and giving a prediction of what the next 12 months will bring in terms of crops, weather and growth. My contribution to the Winter Knits collection references back to this winter celebration. People gather together for feasts and songs and making their wishes and goals. The Petu hat, Petu meaning star, features a lace star stitch motif in a fuzzy mohair yarn on a backdrop of the night sky twinkling with stars, the wool and mohair held together. So I'm featuring this pattern at the perfect time as winter and the long dark nights are entering the southern hemisphere right now. Two strands of yarn are held together to make the beautiful texture of this bandana cowl. I've just learned that that's what this style is called and I like it. The strands held together make a quicker knit at the DK weight. This sample uses two yarns, Farmer's Daughters Fibres Pishkin DK weight, which is 100% Rambouille wool, and Ito Yarn Sensei, a mohair silk lace weight blend. Both yarns are available from your from UK stockists. Petu Cowl comes in one size with an 18 inch or 45 centimeter neck circumference. There is also a matching hat in this collection which is well worth checking out if you like to have matching sets of accessories. The pattern, the tassels and the yarn choice really make this cowl stand out and I love the casual style. And that's my top 10 knits. Thank you so much for watching. All images have been used with the very kind permission of the knitting designers. I haven't been paid and no designers have contacted me to be featured. This is just me feeling so inspired by the new designers and patterns I found that I wanted to share them with you. Links to patterns and designers Instagram accounts are available in the show notes below. If you like what you see please let me know and if there are any amazing designers you'd like to see on the channel please get in touch. Please do share, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Top 10 Knits.